Hi everyone, so in this last video on uh, black body radiation, I want to again summarize what we discussed in the, all the previous videos, which is that there's this phenomenon called black body radiation. Remember that that has to do with the fact that um, objects when heated can uh, emit a certain uh, type of uh, light, certain color of light, and that color of light is associated with the wavelength of course, and then the amount of energy uh, emitted is associated with the intensity of the light so we can then make plots of these uh, emission and if you do the you know if you create these plots from experimental data you get these type of plots however um, the physicists at the time when they're trying to explain this behavior based on the physics that uh, were available at the time they're predicting something that's completely different than what was observed experimentally so then came uh, along uh, Max Planck, who figured out that you can only make this, uh, you can only make the theory fit the experiment if you're changing the theory to this in the sense that energy that's delivered can only come in specific amounts, which he referred to as quanta of energy, with uh, energy of each quant, uh, each quantum of energy equivalent to the value of n times h times nu. And in the previous video, when I ended the video, I talked about this idea of a difference between a quantized versus a non-quantized world. A quantized world basically means that the object, like the turtle here, can only occupy certain energy values. Or a lot. Of, you'll hear later on that the term energy levels or energy states are also used. But basically, the turtle can only occupy certain energy states. Uh, the classical way of looking at things, uh, classical mechanics, is that the turtle can occupy any energy level. Okay, so it's continuous. Now, it's important to explain at this point that, you know, the, 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 the quantized uh, way of, uh, of, of things, of the way things work, it's not something we're uh, comfortable with. It's not intuitive. It's not something that we experience every day. What we experience every day is something like this, a continuous landscape, okay? If you imagine a swing, okay, let's say you're pushing somebody through a swing. You know, the swing can occupy any position from the starting point to the ending point, right? There isn't, uh, you know, the swing doesn't just go from one location to another location, you know, like to specific location. It's not restricted to just specific locations, but it can go continuously through uh, you know, from the starting point to the ending point, okay? Anything you do, you throw a ball, right? You know that when you throw a ball from, let's say, from your uh, starting point to another person, you throw it to me, for example, the ball will travel through, you know, the, all the paths, all the distance that is covered from where you're at to where I'm at, okay? The ball is not go all of a sudden going to just be at certain points in that location, in that all that distance, it's going to travel throughout all of this um, distance. It's not going to just be here, and then here, and then here, and then here, okay? So it's not restricted to specific positions, but it's gonna, it can travel through all of these positions. That's what we're used to in our uh, everyday uh, world, and that's why it's so hard to understand quantum mechanics, because it turns out that for certain types of uh, scale, which really, you know, only is for this very small scale, for, for atomic scale uh, phenomenon, we find that they work like this. So like atoms and electrons, light, they can only occupy certain energy values. And we'll talk more about this as, as we go along, but this is why quantum mechanics is so hard to understand, because it's not like what we see every day. You know, it's more, you know, again, it's something that happens when we're looking at things that are very small. Okay, so let's move on here and summarize Planck's idea. Planck basically said that transfer of energy occurs in discrete, okay, this term discrete is, is commonly used as well, discrete or specific values or quantized values instead of continuous values, okay? In the specific case of black body radiation, right, the light that's emitted basically has an upper limit because the electron that's oscillating okay remember that the electron is in a hot object is oscillating the frequency of, of that oscillation is is limited to specific values and 
the amount of energy that the hot object is getting is just not enough to oscillate the electron to very very high frequency so as a result you have a maximum in terms of how fast the electron can oscillate before it drops down again because at this frequency at very high frequency practically no electron can oscillate at such a high frequency so in the end the radiation at that the intensity of the radiation at that level is very very small very low okay so Planck's equation is this E equals n h nu remember I said earlier n must be an integer which is either 1 2 3 4 or so on but not decimals not 1.67 2.29 you know 3.95 or whatever it has to be an integer uh, it has to be a multiple. In other words, energy can only be transferred as a multiple of this number. 1 times h nu, 2 times h nu, 3 times h nu, and so on. h is Planck's constant. It's experimentally determined. Found this value to be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Joule second is the unit. It's kind of a funny uh, unit. If you think about it, uh, it it's really, it's, it's sort of like a, a measure of uh, uh, energy uh, for a given frequency um, uh, value okay so there is for a frequency value you have a certain uh, certain energy associated with it it's not something that you you know uh, not something that you might uh, immediately have a understanding intuitive understanding about but basically it's the again the m amount of energy that you have for a particular given frequency okay um, now new of course this uh, symbol light right here is the frequency of the light itself that's being uh, emitted okay now let's try to do this in an example okay this is a fairly straightforward example is really just kind of plugging into the numbers into that equation so it says here microwave radiation has a wavelength of around one centimeter calculate the frequency of the uh, energy of this radiation if n you know that value n is one and then calculate it again if n is equal to Avogadro's number. Okay, so I'm just writing a, a, a part of the uh, problem here, showing you that uh, it's basically it could be written this way: e is n h nu, n equals one, right? It's that's the first question that I was asking. That means that e has to be equal to h nu. And then what you do is you just plug in numbers here. H nu, remember, you can write it because we're not given frequency, but we're given wavelength, so we can write it as hc over lambda. Okay, this is an equation that you see very often in this chapter, hc over lambda. I might as well remember it now. Um, and then we just plug in some number here, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Um, Joule second, remember, is the unit of Planck's constant. That's what it was. And then speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. And remember, this is in meters per second. And then our lambda here, or the wavelength that's given is one centimeter, which is of course 0.01 meter. I wanna write it in meter because I already have a meter here, so I can cancel this meter with that meter. I can cancel the second with that second. So you see that in the end, I have a unit by dimensional analysis. My answer is in joules. And if I calculate this, I should get a value of 1.99 times 10 to the minus 23rd uh, joules. And again, this is if uh, n uh, is equal to 1. In other words, this would be the energy of one packet, okay, for this particular radiation, the radiation with a wavelength of 1 centimeter. Now, the other, the next question asks for if you have, instead of just 1, you have an Avogadro's number of packets okay so you have a lot of packets now right n equals Avogadro's number that means that it's equal to uh, six times you know six times 10 to the 23rd right 6.01 times 10 to the 23rd um, so then you know the question is if you have that many packets what is your uh, you know what what's your value well remember that this is for per packet right this is one packet you can think of it so if I have uh, this many packets then I just need to multiply this number by Avogadro's number so then my E would be equal to 1.99 times 10 to the minus 23rd joules per packet uh, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd packets okay per uh, Avogadro's number, which is really per mole, right? Remember that that's how, that's really a definition of a mole. So if you multiply these two numbers together, 
you get about uh, 11 point nine seven joules okay so you can see that the idea of this question is really to just use Planck's uh, equation but also to understand that one packet is really a very small amount of energy now but once you have one mole of the packets you start to have you know a, a more measurable amount of energy okay and so that's what it is so in everyday life the amount of energy we see is more on this scale even larger much larger than this which means this which means that there's a lot of packets when there's a lot of packets then it's a lot harder to see the discrete nature of of you know the quantum world but when you're dealing only with one or two packets the value differences becomes a lot more uh, you know uh, enough for you to be able to see the difference okay whereas when you're dealing with a large number of packets it's a little hard to see the difference between this let's say you have this many packet versus one you know this number minus one so it's very small difference in the energy right but when you have n equals one versus n equals two you get a bigger difference and that difference is measurable and it's it's something that we observe uh, when we're dealing with things like black body radiation okay